we serious about ending the insidious practice of human trafficking? Are we serious about punishing those who prey on folks with false promises and fraudulent documents? Are we serious about border security and employment verification? Are we serious about making this the last, last time we have this conversation? After Trayvon Martin was killed, the president said that could have been my son, Mr. Speaker. And when I see a picture of a beautiful Kate Steinle smiling, that could have been any of our daughters. Sanctuary cities. It has almost a utopian sound to it, doesn't it? Well, as the speaker knows, the definition of sanctuary is a place of refuge or safety. And my question for folks in San Francisco and my colleagues who support this policy is a refuge for whom? A sanctuary for whom? A refuge for Kate Steinle? A sanctuary for Kate Steinle? Or a refuge for a convicted felon with a 25-year-long criminal history? And what this administration needs to tell the American people, Mr. Speaker, is how much risk is acceptable. Given the consequences of reconciling the risk wrongly, how much risk is this administration willing to take? When it comes to public safety, we have to be successful all of the time. And those who seek to do us harm have to be successful just once. The president is the commander in chief. He should help us make this our home safer. He should help us make the homeland of the refugees safer. He should restore order to the region. That would be the very best and most humane thing we could all do, provide a better, safer life for those who aspire one where they are. The female terrorist was radicalized well before her application to come to the United States. How did we miss that twice? Uh, the president says we're scared of widows and orphans. Uh, with uh, all due respect to him, what I'm really afraid of is a foreign policy that creates more widows and orphans.
about radical Islam, I would take the word radical out of the equation. The problem is Islam. Muslims rejoicing in the carnage. They call themselves the Revolution Muslim. Today on the website, they called the alleged shooter Major Hassan an officer and a gentleman. They said, quote, we love you. At the same time, they called the slain soldiers terrorists who were, quote, eternal hellfire. We're commanded to terrorize the disbelievers. And this is a religion, like I said, and to terrorize the And the Quran says very clearly in the Arabic language, language, Kohibuna. This means terrorize them. It's a command from Allah. These pictures now. This is what happened. Uh, Muslims have been attacking Christians attending a Catholic celebration in southern France. Okay, this is where the uh, Don Bosco celebration it, it, It's Catholics who, who are just coming out of church and there's a feast there and, and so on. And once again, I mean, you know, the religion of peace. <laughs> جهادنا وتضحياتنا ليكون قادة الفتح منهم إن شاء الله ونحن اليوم نزرع هذه البشريات في نفوسهم ونؤسسهم من خلال المساجد والمصاحف ومن خلال سيرة نبينا عليه الصلاة والسلام وسيرة الصحابة الأولين والقادة العظام لهذه المهمة مهمة إنقاذ البشرية من نار هم على شفا suggest the country's most rapidly growing demographic is Muslim. That white Britons are now a minority here, as well as in three other British cities. In 2011, nearly four million immigrants came to the UK. Sociologists say that they're baffled at just how quickly the number of indigenous Brits has diminished over the past decade. <laughs> Some put it down to 
to a case of white flight. They say that Caucasian Brits are moving out of the country's most diverse areas. Hardly anyone imagined just 20 years ago that the native French population would be finding itself in a rapidly decreasing minority here. Durch die demografische Entwicklung und mit Hilfe der NATO, die es zustande brachte, sage und schreibe, den ersten islamischen Staat auf europäischem Boden zu begründen. Welch selbstmörderisches Unterfangen. Dostane maç olur inşallah. Yunan sana karşı ben iki maç oynama şansı bu. Mit dem heilvollen Signal. Überall setzt sich das islamische Dogma durch in der Türkei. Wir setzen die Islamisten nach und nach alle Justiz- und Armeeposten, um das Erbe des Kemal Atatürk aus der Welt zu schaffen. Der Libanon wird in den nächsten Jahrzehnten ein islamistischer Staat werden. Der arabische Frühling ist dabei, von den Islamisten in Beschlag genommen zu werden. Im Irak in Ägypten und in Pakistan stehen die letzten christlichen Gemeinschaften vor der Ausrottung. Und was tun wir bei uns? Wir lassen diese gewalttätige Doktrin in ethnisch-kulturellen Ghettos ungehindert den Rechtsstaat ausheben. Da sind wir denn wahnsinnig geworden? We have an amazing country. We need strong leadership. We need compassionate leadership. We have to take care of our health care. We have to take care of our borders. We have to make our military so strong, so big, so powerful that nobody messes with us. We're never going to have to use it. We are going to win at the military. We're going to win at the border. We're going to win on trade. We're going to get rid of Obamacare and come up with great, great, powerful, wonderful health care. I got to know Donald Trump after he spoke here in 2012, and I learned so much about him that the public never hears. Right after he visited here last time, he. I called him about a large Christian ministry in another state that needed some help. I learned within a day or two he had donated $100,000 of his own money. He um, learned about Clyde Fraser Jr. who ran the Harlem Hoops at tournament in the inner city and was killed in the 911 attacks and he searched down the family and he donated the money to keep that tournament going. Trump was watching a report about a Maytag plant that moved out of Iowa into uh, Mexico and the three companies in that report, he actually searched them out. They were about to go out of business because Maytag had left, and he found ways to buy products from those companies through his hotels to keep them in business. He gave the money to the local Domino's pizza restaurant so they could buy cheese and bread and keep their business in business. And those are just things I thought the world needed to know about Donald Trump because the Bible says by their fruits you shall know them. When you look at the fruits of his life and all the people he's provided jobs, I think that's the true test of somebody's Christianity. The most important thing I can tell you is this. It starts on February 1st. You will be so proud of me. You will be so proud of yourselves. And you will be so proud of our country. And you're going to say to your children that we were part of a movement to take back our country. We will make America great again.